All right, now getting into our pivot fakes. Okay, we went a little, over a little bit of them with no partner in front of you. Now it's going to be a lot easier to see with a partner what I mean. Uh, again, like I said, you're going to wrestle an opponent that's a right ear, lefty lead, semi good square. Uh, me being a double leg guy predominantly growing up and going into college, the main goal for myself was get that guy's feet square. Whenever I get his feet square, I sort of got to pick a letter of what shot I want to take. Okay, and again, I'm a double leg guy. It's a lot easier to double somebody that's square, square footed. Uh, and, and it was on me to get those feet square. All right, because I wasn't going to rely on him. And what you'll notice is in a lot of my wrestling in motion, you'll never see me circle a lot one way or the other to get that foot forward. I did a lot of one step pivot, two step pivot, whatever you want to call it, um, really attacking the lead leg. Jace here is a lefty lead. I know that going in. Uh, I love wrestling lefties. It's the same side, closer reach, easier to get to a little bit. So that's me. And that developed over time. I used to hate to wrestle. Then over time, when you sort of just got to Fight the bullet, it actually became a much more comfortable style for me to wrestle. So, what we'll do is start with Jason the lefty, and I'm going to show you both sides, both lead legs, to make sure you guys understand it. Uh, Jason the lefty here. So, again, my hands and feet have got to work together, right? I can't just make him and expect him to react to me. The highest level of wrestlers are not going to react to a fade and then coming back out. They're just going to look at you, right? So, so a big portion of mine is staying in my fade, attacking the feet, not the knees. The feet, all the way down those heels, like I mentioned before, all the way to the heels, you've got to attack the heels. Now, I like, on, on this left leg, I love going inside. It's where I go 100% of the time. And you'll see I grab the inside portion of his foot. If you're not comfortable turning your hand over, that's fine. You're, you can go outside. It's, a, again, a personal preference. There's not one way right, one way wrong. All right? So, first and foremost, my wrestler, Jason's on left. First thing, again, I'm going to always leave with my lead hand. And I always like to make contact on the shoulder. It's not a touch. It's not a, like a soft hand. You got your hand, you got to use it, okay? It's a pop on the shoulder. You call him up, and I hit him right with my palm, and then I call him up to take his head off the middle of the body. All right, right here, his head's in the middle of the body. He's got a good defensive position. He's got his hand, his hands, and then I'm into his hips, all right? I want to get a couple of those out of the way. A lot of times when I come up here and I move, I got his head out of the way. All right? Now his head is not in the middle of the body, and so I can attack. Okay? And so what I'm going to do is my right feet on the left feet, pop, push, I step right outside of his toe. Okay? I've got about a six inch gap here. I step right outside. I, my hand falls off the neck, right to the inside portion of his foot. All right? Now I know I'm not just going to pull this foot up into a single line. I know that. Am I going to act like it? Am I going to chase it down? Absolutely. Because it may happen. But I know in the back of my head, when I hit here, Jason, that's what he's doing. He's pulling away. Look where his hips are going. He's pulling away here. Now, I'm pivoting around, putting my feet in shooting position to his square stance. Back leg flies, raise my pivot, forward. Okay? Now I'm in good position. I've got an attack. Okay? So again, we'll speed it up a little bit. Pop, pop, push, pop, push, inside push of the foot, get his feet square, move forward. Here, go on. I got my I got my attack, I've got my fake. Again, I swerve his feet up, all from attacking one leg. Okay? And, and again, you'll never see me swear my feet to serve. Just not my style. Not saying it's wrong, it's not my style. Okay? I want to be a very efficient with my hands and feet. So my hands gotta work. I can't just fake here and expect him to swear up. I gotta attack this lead leg. That's my leg. I'm gonna attack it. Pop push. Four. Four. Okay? Now let's change sides so you can see it both ways here. If there's anything I'm missing, okay? So again, pop, push, step, hand slides to the inside portion of the foot. I want him to square it up, right? He's gonna pull back, boom, back leg flies, shooting position, flat inside portion on the, on the mat, take a little step forward, okay? Make him uncomfortable in that position. We do not want him to be comfortable sitting in front of me like this. If I start faking, and coming back out, he's going to know I'm not, I'm not coming off that fake. I'm not going to go through him in that fake. So I've got to really put that heat on, put that pressure on. So again, pop push, pop push, inside portion of the foot, back leg flies, small step forward. We're in my position. If I'm on my double, my single, my high crotch, I'm not as worried about the attack at that point, at, at that point as much as I'm worried about getting him out of position or into my position where I want. There's a lot of different attacks. 
I'm a double leg guy, he might not be a double leg guy. That's fine. He might be a single high crotch, great. Theater square, you got you got to pick what you want to do. Alright? Now, Jason's the right hand. Alright? Leading his right leg. Nothing changes with my attack hand. I'm a right hand. I've got to use my right hand. It's my attack hand. Alright? So I hug it. Left hand always stays in the pocket. I pop right. I push. Right? I push to, to the lead leg to get that head out of the middle. Okay? Now, I step again about six inches outside of the toe. And my, my head hand comes right to the inside of his right leg here. Okay? And again, what's he going to do? He's going to pull back. I'm going to pivot around and his feet are square. Small step. Close your gap. Okay? Stay in your fake. I'm going to choose position if I need to hit. I can hit out of that state from over here without taking my step if I see there's an opportunity, all right? But I've got to keep the pressure and the presence and the heat on him so he's always feeling like he's a step behind me, all right? So, pop push, hand comes off, okay, pull, okay? So the other side, he's a righty, make sure we see all, all the angles of it. I pop push, hand slides up to the inside of the foot, Right? And that's, what you, that's what you want to do. If I come back out, he knows he's got to respect it. Stay in my face, pivot around. Toe points right between his feet. If I needed to hit, I can hit here. My knees can readjust me. If not, I can take my small step forward, crown him, get to my control. If you're more of a contact wrestler, contact scores. Inside elbow, for me, it's all elbow overtime. A lot of guys are inside. Again, not wrong, not me. All right? That, that extra little small step at the end of it, We'll close that gap when he's on the defense. Okay, top push. Get to where you want to be. Take your head to the sternum. I'm in good position. Give me, I'm an elbow control outside. That's where I want to be. So if I'm making contact, I'm going to fake, pivot step, fake, crowd. Get to here. I'm not ever going to be sort of draping inside of the outside, over time, wherever I want to be. Right? That's my space. That's where I'm going to dictate that space. All right? So. Now, tying them together, all right? I don't care if he's a righty, lefty. I'm going to get these feet out of whack. I'm going to get them sort of behind the eight ball, okay? And, and, and somebody that's offensive-minded, defensive ready, as I said, we're always going to press forward. We're always going to be, in my mind, keeping this guy one step behind my action, all right? Because with my action, it becomes his reaction. Great. Now he's reacting to everything I'm doing rather than being proactive with what he's doing, worried about where his hands are, his feet are. I want to keep him a step behind at all times, all right? So we'll get lined up here, Jason, either way, he's, he's leaving a, a small right leg in here, so that's the first leg I'm going to attack. I'm going to wait till he attack it and then close my distance, and then you'll see a left leg out of him eventually. So here, come on, here. Make it, make it react on straight fake. Pivot around, I'm ready to shoot. He's always a step behind you, reacting. All right? He's always reacting to me. And he's not worried about what he's got to do. He's worried about what I'm doing. All right? And when you have a pivot step fake, when you have a, a one step fake, you're able to do that. Is it hard? Absolutely. That takes hours and hours of practicing that and getting into shape. As you can see, being all retired, not me anymore. Okay? I can't sustain that. Like they used to. To be able to do it for six, seven minutes, it takes hours of practice daily. Getting in there, getting getting the reps, getting exhausted, feel your legs burn, your lungs burn, and then doing it again. All right, so that's a little bit of my pivot step face. Uh, like I said, it's not just one or the other. At the end of the day, it's about timing together right, left, middle, right, left, middle. And that one step pivot action so we can really see where this guy.